Hello there, I'm John Muir Laws. I'm a scientist and an explorer, and I would like to invite you on an adventure with me. Over the next year, we're going to explore ways of unlocking the mysteries of the world around us by heightening our observations, intensifying our curiosity, and giving ourselves a place to make meaning out of everything that we see. The secret is keeping a nature journal. A nature journal is where we take all of the observations, the questions, the connections, and the explanations we make for everything that we see around us. And we take it out of our head and get it onto a piece of paper using words and pictures and numbers. This process is fun, it's creative, and the more you work at it, the better you're going to get at it. So you're going to be able to develop a set of skills that allows you to sit down in any situation and understand how you can take whatever you see around you, document it onto the piece of paper. The observations are our first step. Expand that into finding the mysteries around us and then build those to start to, to make explanations for what we see. When we play in our journal, we're going to be using three different languages to document and describe all the different sorts of phenomena that we find. So these three languages are words, pictures, and numbers. Let's take a look at them one at a time. When we use words in our journal, this allows us to be very, very specific and to dial in on a detail that we know we want to record. Words are also excellent ways of describing our questions and explanations that we have. Sometimes that's hard to show in a picture. And that leads us to strategy number two, the pictures. When we're putting pictures and drawings into our journals, the way our brain works is fundamentally different than the way it works when we're just using a, uh, when we're just writing with words. So it's not that one is better than the other, They're, they take up different parts of our brain. So if we're intentionally using words and then other times intentionally putting in pictures, we have more of our brain to play with, with whatever it is that we're looking at. Now the pictures don't have to be pretty pictures. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. The most important thing for us as scientists is that they're useful. So if, when you see something, if you can describe part of that using a visual strategy, right, this is successful. So this can be, this can look like a map. This could be a very simplified diagram. It could be a portrait of something. The pictures can also, can also be zoomed in. The pictures can, can, show an object from different angles. So there's gonna be a lot of different ways to play with these ideas of pictures. And over the course of our training together, we're gonna to be dialing in and becoming experts at using all of those strategies for our pictures. And so too with looking at the numbers. If we start counting, measuring, timing, and finding numbers in the phenomenon that we observe, this trains us to be really specific in a different kind of way. We're going to train ourselves when we can't be specific and say there's 45. How to estimate and how to estimate things with accuracy and precision. This system of words, pictures, and numbers, getting everything that comes out of your head and down into your journal is the secret that opens the door to being an observer, an adventurer, someone who can walk into any environment and make discoveries. The process is creative, the process is fun, and you're gonna get better and better and better at it the more that you practice. Let's take a look at some of the supplies you might want to have in your nature journal kit to help prepare you for this adventure. First and foremost on that list, is some form of a nature journal. All right. There's a bunch of different types of journals that can work. You wanna find one that works for you, one that feels good in your hands. First of all, let's avoid the ones that are too big. If your journal is really large and you're, you're gonna have a hard time you know, turning the pages and it's not gonna fit in your backpack and you're going to eventually think to yourself, this is, this is just a hassle and it'll get left at home. And if you don't have your journal, you don't have your journal. 
Another problem, though, is if your journal is too small, if you've got one of those little mini books, then what happens is you can only put half of an idea on each page. Then you turn the page, you get to the next idea. You turn the page, now you're on the next idea. The problem with this is one of the powers of getting your ideas out of your head and onto a piece of paper is that when they start dancing on the page next to each other, you can start to make connections between things that you otherwise might not see. So having a page that's big enough for your ideas to spread out and have a diagram and some written notes and some measurements, all that stuff on the same page together really, really, really helps. So not too big, not too small, some sort of medium size that can easily fit in your backpack. Let's think kind of practicality and logistics in the field. If your journal is really floppy, you're going to want a clipboard when you're out there. But then that's just one more thing to bring with you. If you have a journal that has a hard cover, then it is its own clipboard, right? So when you're out there and you're, you're making your observations, you just open your book and you're going to town. So that, that's a very, very practical thing to do. So I like a journal that has a hard cover. I also want one that's going to stand up to the rigors of being used all year long. Now, if you use up your journal before that, you're gonna get another one, that's fantastic. But this journal might be one that you're gonna be working in for a while. So if you have one that has a spiral binding, what we find is that by the end of the year, these things are really falling apart. The pages are coming out and, and it's, you're gonna wish that you had um, a more sort of heavy duty book that would hold up to that. So ones with a sewn-in binding of some sort, really, really helpful. So um, I like ones that where there's a hard cover, medium size, sewn-in binding. A low-cost uh, approach that works really well is little composition books. And sometimes you can find these that have graph paper in them or blank pages. Those are gold when you find them. If you do get one of these, just make sure that it's one of the ones with a stiff uh, cardboard cover. There's some now that they make, they're all floppy, and we've already talked about that. You don't want those ones. So you're gonna find yourself a journal that re you really like. And, and once you do, you're gonna personalize it a little bit. So the, what I suggest you do is get your journal and just kind of break it in a little bit. That is, just open it up and on the first page, decorate it any way you want. If there's a quote or a thought that means a lot to you, you can add that in there. If you want to draw a picture of one of your favorite um, animals, um, you can also do that. It's also a good idea to write your name in there and a contact phone number. I've lost a lot of journals. And then what happens is somebody else finds it and they open it up and it says, if lost, please return to. And then they give you a call and you get your journal back. So um, if your journals go on as many, as many places as mine do, um, you're going to want to have some way for them to come home. So, a few other really handy tools are going to be something to write with. And that can be a pencil, and that can be a regular pencil that you sharpen. Um, then you have to bring a sharpener. Or a mechanical pencil. If you do get a mechanical pencil, look around and find one that doesn't jam and break and clog all the time. Some mechanical pencils, you'll spend more time messing with your pencil than actually writing things. Another way to go is to just a, a straight up ballpoint pen is a really useful sketching tool. They tend not to break, although every once in a while they'll run out of ink. Um, so something to write with. I also find that it's so much fun to use color in our journals. And uh, the easiest way to add color is just to get yourself a small set of colored pencils. Not a really big box, because then it's a nuisance to bring with you. I just have a small set of colored pencils that I've connected together with a rubber band. And that is going to cover me for most of the journaling uh, experiences that I have. And I can use these in my diagrams, I can use these in drawings that I do, I can use them to highlight and circle really cool discoveries and ideas. I can sometimes even color code a page and circle things that are all kind of relating to the same subject or the same question. There's a lot that you can do with color, but if you don't have color, then you can't do that. One last tool that you may find very, very useful is a little centimeter ruler. Um, with this, I'm going to be able to measure my 
uh, of the things that I find. And you want one, if it has, just make sure that it has centimeters and millimeters on it. Scientists find the metric measuring system tends to be much more useful than the imperial. If we're using feet, inches, and yards, very quickly we're going to run into some problems with that system. So, um, a little metric ruler, my journal, and I'm ready to go. Those are my essential tools. So, my challenge for you between now and the next time we meet is to get your kit together and find a journal that you like, personalize it for yourself, get a few more essential supplies, and then you'll be ready for whatever we do. This is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn some really practical skills. You're going to get better at drawing. You're going to be, get better at finding the numbers around you. You'll improve your ability to observe, to remember, to make connections, to draw. All those things are skills. This process makes you a more curious person. By the time you're done, the sorts of questions that you're going to be able to come up with are going to be much more interesting, much more sophisticated. These are skills. Anybody can learn them. I think you're really going to enjoy this adventure. So get yourself ready and come along. I'm John Muir Laws, and this is your Nature Journal Connection.